Are good and evil two sides of the same coin? Get God Failed, Ariel Langford's disturbing account of a tortured soul manipulated by good and by evil. God Failed is available everywhere digital books are sold. Hey Wally, it's Sutton. You won't believe what I have in my hands right now. Oh, and I know what happened in the basement. See you soon. We're searching for the Demonic Testament, a book written by a demon, and you're coming with us. You thought you were real cute with that one, didn't you? Well, I'm always real cute. But yeah, it was nice to finally know something before you. Whatever. (laughs) She's just sitting across from me right now. She's just smiling, trying to look all innocent. That's because I am innocent. Well, sometimes. Okay. All right. Before we get into the show tonight, we need to mention a couple of things. First, if you haven't been following the updates on Instagram or Twitter... You should probably stop listening right now and go get yourself caught up and then come back and listen to this episode. Yeah, we had some visitors this week and I'm not too, well, let's just say it's made me a bit shaky. Yeah, that, uh, that shit yesterday was pretty creepy. Mm Mm-hmm. But, uh, this gin that, uh, Guno left us is pretty good though. Is it calming your nerves at all? Mm, A little. No, not really. I need more, I think. Okay, where was I? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, The other thing is, tonight we're going to be diving into the God Fail book written by Ariel Langford. Specifically, we're going to be talking about Madeline Harrington, Christian's mother and Agatha's daughter. What a ride this book and the journal took us on. What do you think? Well, to be honest, there's some things that I have trouble wrapping my head around. But, yeah, it was quite the story, that's for sure. Do you think any of it's true? Well, I read the journal first, and the way that it was written told me that if it wasn't true, this kid certainly believed that it was. And God Failed definitely used the journal for the events that Ariel wasn't around for, but the parts about her experiences with Christian lined up with the, um, hmm, what's the word, um feel i guess yeah the feel so what about you what's your take on this i think there's no doubt god failed is a hundred percent based on real events she and christian went through and what christian went through with his mother oh man that lady was wacko so she starts out as being your typical go to church every sunday lady and then ends up this totally insane religious nut job yeah That pretty much describes her perfectly. But before we get into Madeline, I think you should uh, maybe read Ariel's Ford so we can, you know, kind of get into the state of mind she was in when she wrote God Failed. Okay, yeah, it's it's really haunting, I think. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. I listened to Christian's stories. I read his journal. I lived through so much of it. Then I let my imagination go to the darkest places and found this story. True good and absolute evil exists, sometimes in the same person at the same time. I feel them both now hugging in a warm embrace with every word I write. I do believe in God and the devil, for without one you don't have the other. I will write a story about the truth and wrap it in darkness so you can fall asleep at night believing the evil was contained in these pages and could never touch you. Let yourself believe it's all made up, for I know the truth when my eyes are open and closed. His end was my beginning. Wow. She's just pretty much just coming out and saying that this is all true. Yeah, she is. I think it's interesting she wrote it as a fiction and not a memoir. Yeah, uh, maybe writing this as fiction just helped her deal with it. I mean, if she remembers it as fiction, then maybe in her mind it's not real. It's just a story. Yeah, I, I think if I was compelled to write my story in this house, 
I'd do the same thing. <laughs> Maybe. But, um, oh, we forgot to do something. What? Oh, shit. We did. Go for it. As you heard in the very beginning, you can get God Failed right now. Well, you can pre-order it. It officially releases on Black Friday. Black Friday, that was Wally's idea. Hey, it's the biggest shopping day of the year. (laughs) And we got to pay these bills somehow. I mean, this investigation isn't cheap, you know. (laughs) Ain't that the truth. Anyway, to get your very own copy, go to godfailed.me and reserve your copy now. Seriously, this is some twisted stuff and you really have to read it for yourself to get the full effect. And speaking of twisted, let's talk about Madeline. Ooh, the loving church-going mother of a boy named Christian. Where should we start? Well, I say we start with some backstory. Now, she would always drag Christian to church every Sunday, which created uh, some awkward situations in the family dynamic, so to speak. Yeah, listen to this. Christian, come here. The boy turned around and saw his father stand, wiping fresh dirt off his large hands with swift strokes of an old towel. He knew what was coming, because every Sunday after Mass, he always got the third degree. Slowing down to gather his thoughts, Christian wondered if he should tell the truth or lie to his father this week. The questions were asked away from his mom, which made the guilt stronger, with one more secret to add to his slumped shoulders. What did you learn today? This first question was always different. Sometimes it was, how was Mass? Or, was there a lot of people there? But he never had been asked what he had learned. This was a definite time to lie, because the only thing he could remember was the priest eating and drinking Jesus. (laughs) He had just learned what a cannibal was, and wanted to ask his mom if the priest was a cannibal. But when he was going to ask, a baby cried out. All eyes turned to the bundle and the mother. His mom's face pinched, showing her disapproval of the young mother. Christian's question stopped, dead on his lips. Um, well, I learned about the saints that are all around the inside of the church. He puffed out his chest as the words tumbled out. Yes, he thought up of a doozy of a lie. What did your mother have to say about Mass? Did she make you kneel and say all those prayers? By this time, beads of sweat were popping up on the back of Christian's neck, and he didn't know why his dad always had to do this to him. If he didn't want Christian to go to church, then why did he let him go? Instead, he had to face these questions, lie to his father, keep things from his mother, and he still couldn't stop them from fighting. Well... Poor kid, straight from church and has to decide whether or not to lie to keep the peace in the family. (laughs) I do love the part about the priest being a cannibal. (laughs) Yeah, it's sort of cute in a disturbing sort of way. Mm -hmm. Cute. (laughs) but, But really, forcing your kid to go to church, especially back then, wasn't a big deal. It happened to most kids. But in chapter 8, we really see how totally immersed in her faith she is. You mean how disturbed she really is. Madeline took a break from her morning chores, grabbed her cigarettes, then walked into the front room where she had left her Bible. She had a habit of flipping the book open to a different place each time she picked it up and read whatever was in front of her. She liked to think some divine intervention was the one who chose which page she opened. God himself could be communicating to her in his own way. God himself could be communicating to her in his own way. Wow. And this is something to keep in mind because it speaks to how easily manipulated she was to do Sarath spitting. And, you know, she really thinks the answer to everything lies in the church or in the scripture. Ah, yes. The lost Bible. (laughs) Yeah. So she goes to bed one night. And she finds this leather-bound book on her nightstand. She immediately immediately believes that this book holds all the answers. She watched as the gold letters raised out of the black leather. In an ornate cursive style of writing, 
she saw the words, The Lost Bible, appear. Shivers ran up her spine as each letter gleamed in front of her. Picking up the book again, she pulled the covers over her bare legs and got comfortable before she opened the book up again. The first page was still empty. At the top of the third page, a word appeared. Death. And under that, a thick line with name, then date, and then finally place. Most Bibles had a place for family information, like weddings, baptisms, first communions, but they never had an area solely for deaths in the family. The table of contents now showed themselves on the fifth page. One finger ran over the words as confusion set in. She did not find Old Testament or New Testament like all the other Bibles she had ever opened. Just the words, the truth, in the middle of the page. And under that, a title for the first chapter. So, before I go further, I want to sidetrack us just for a second here. The words, the truth, really stuck out for me. Especially after our conversation last week. And I can't help but wonder if the lost Bible is the book we're looking for. Now, I, I, I don't want to get into that discussion right now. I just wanted to throw it out there. I thought it was important to mention. Wow, that's really interesting because my first thought was, is this a second book written by Sarath? Okay, all right. Yeah, that could be. But see, <laughs> that's a whole other discussion. Okay, so getting back to Madeline. We should point out that by the time she finds the lost Bible, Christian and Ariel are together, in love, mm -hmm. and Ariel's having a positive influence on him, yep. which Madeline doesn't like. Nope. Yeah, right. So basically, she uses this book, which she believes to be the holy of the holy, to justify her actions. But the book is actually the work of Sarath. She's so blinded by faith, she can't even see how fucked up this all is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just doing evil under the guise of good, you know. Yeah, that's that's an understatement. Should we talk about the incident where Christian almost killed his mother? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he finally got sick of her shit. I mean, it's not right, you know, I get it. I mean, the hell that this woman put this kid through, um, you know, it's no wonder that he snapped. Yeah, I know, huh? So, during the altercation, the priest comes in, sees Christian with his hands around his mother's neck, and knocks him out. Oh, wow. A few hours later, he wakes up in a cold, hard floor. The basement. Sound familiar? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. But he's not just in the basement. He's in a cell of sorts. Yes, Madeline built a cell to keep him in. This crazy woman walled up her own kid in the basement to save him from the evil. <laughs> yeah, in, in, in her demented mind, this is where he could repent and get into God's good graces again by praying every single day. That's what he was supposed to do, just pray every day. You know, she was just simply saving his soul by locking him up and, you know, doing the Lord's work. At least, uh, you know, that's what she thought the uh, lost Bible was telling her to do. Yeah, that's messed up. It is, it is, but she got hers. That she did. Damn, did she ever. So, the question is, how does all of this fit in the investigation? Okay, well, first, Madeline being Agatha's daughter, plus the fact she was manipulated by Sarath's book, makes her a person of interest. Right, yeah, and we haven't really had time to just really get into everything in God Failed, but you better believe we're going to be all over that lost Bible. And another thing that makes this story important is that by understanding how Sarath manipulated her and how easily he did it, it helps us understand what we're dealing with. Definitely. You know, to be on guard and keep an eye out for certain things, to be aware of any potential danger. Yeah, yeah. And I can't help but wonder if there are any clues in Sarath's manipulation techniques that could help us find the Demonic Testament. Oh, like what? You know, I, I'm not really sure. It's just sort of a feeling that I have. And, you know, maybe it'll come out. It'll, we'll be able to flush it out once we can dive into this book and journal a little more. Uh, on that note, I think it's time we say goodbye and get something to eat. 
I am starved. <laughs> You're always hungry. Always hungry. Yeah. But now that you mention that, I'm kind of hungry too. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right then. Thanks for listening, everybody. Wally Fitch out. Good night, everyone. Thanks for being here with us. Hey, should we order pizza or go for tacos? Oh, no, wait. Why? This episode may be over, but don't miss what happens next. Follow A Walk in Darkness on Instagram or Twitter for the latest developments in the investigation. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe.